Okay, so we've downloaded products on XLSM, and we'll go ahead and open it up. We're going to do editing, and we're going to dive into user forms. Uh, close down the fountain close. Okay, the whole idea behind the user form is that it's a way to be able to present information to a user in a different way than here on the spreadsheet. To be able to, to ask a question to the user. You've seen dialog boxes. We popped up, you know, a, an input box where you can type in something and you can bring that back. It's really limited. It's like getting one thing. What if you wanted to get two things all at once? Well, then to do that, you create a user form. And so we're going to see how to do that today. But let's just take a look at this data. This is data that I swiped off of some web, some uh, outdoor web kind of outdoor website for outdoor products. They're long out of business. But uh, it was called it was called outlaw.com. It sounded like it was an illegal place, but I think it was I think it was normal. But anyway, um, so these are products there's several hundred products here. And so you know we could kind of come down here and find it. Oops, let's change to something. That's okay. You know, so here's in the pet care group. It's called the pet mate. I have no idea what pet mate is, but if we were to open up that file, that, this image file, you can see a picture of it. And that's actually what's in those, that other image file. It's a zip archive of a bunch of images. And so you can find that one. And then we've got you know, various other things here. It's like season queen. Probably not the best example. But there's a bunch of different products. But you'll notice if I if I needed to like update the information about one of these products, talk to me about the interface that we have here in Excel. What's What's good about this for updating one of these products? What's bad about it? What would you like different? If, if your job was like, okay, I got to update this particular product, what do you want that this interface doesn't give you? You got to come in here. Maybe you got okay. Well, there's a filter. I mean, Excel would filter this, right? We could come in and come to like data and filters, and then we could we could filter this. That would be okay. Uh, Ah, okay. So there's not a whole lot in terms of making sure that everything's done correctly. I might be able to do some stuff with like data validation here, right? So you're, you're familiar with data validation? So there's this <coughs> thing over here called what is it? Is it here? Is it the data sheet? Ah, here's data validation. So with data validation, you can make a list of things somewhere, and you can say, listen, the only values allowed to go into this cell is something in that list. So we can do something with data validation, but it really is pretty limited. So one of the things that user forms is going to really be helpful to us is we're going to kind of put up a new window, and we'll have the information showing there, and the user can make some changes and then say, okay, I'm going to save these. At that point, when they say okay or save or whatever, we can then look over and make sure we can apply whatever rules, kind of crazy rules that we want to through code, any code we want to, to check and make sure it's just the way that it's supposed to be. And if it's no good, we can stop right there before you can run it to the worksheet and say, hey, you got to slow down here, Tonto. you got to fix something. So that's one thing. So kind of data validation, that's a, that's a good thing. We'll, be, we'll do some of that today. Let's say, you know, you're trying to change everything about this particular item. What's the problem? There's a big problem here. To be able to see all of this, all the information for that item, I've got to go through it so small that I can't read it. And so when I'm editing this row, that's all I care about. I don't even really want, I don't care if all the rest of this is useless. All the rest of this is useless. It's just this one little thin row that I'm interested in. I've got a huge screen and I'm saying the only part of these is this little part across the top. And so what I would like to do is say, take all this information and make it more visible so I can say, aha, I'm dealing with this one. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's do that. We're going to use a user form. So let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and come to my code editor. And products. Okay, here we are. VBA products at XLS. Okay. So so far there's no VBA code in here. I've got you know, the modules that come with my two worksheets and one that goes with the whole workbook. And so normally, we would start off by saying insert module. We're not going to do that this time. We're instead going to insert a user form. So we'll start off by saying insert user form. And that is going to give me, oh, I just inserted in the wrong one. Let me leave that here. Remove user form. Here, I've selected my product at XLSM and insert user form. Good, okay. Let's just make sure, just for a moment, that we've got user form 
showing up here beneath your products on XLS and you didn't accidentally put it in a different workbook, there's user form one. So here it is, right? At this point, it's like a blank canvas. And these are our tools right here in the toolbox. If your toolbox isn't showing, then there should be a tool. Ah, here it is. There's a tool that has like a hammer with a wrench crossed across it. It looks vaguely communist to me, and I'm always a little nervous <laughs> to click on it, but that's a tool that will bring up then your toolbox. Okay. So these then, there should be more of these. Can we just go over there? More of these, there's more of these to see. All right, so first of all, let's just look at a couple of properties of the form itself. So let's select the, the user form. And the first thing is we're going to give this thing a name. So right here is the name property. It's just called user form one. That's a really bad name. So instead, I'm going to start it off with the three character prefix that I always use for my, for my forms. That's FRM. And then I'll just call it product. Form product. That just changes the name. I'm going to have to refer to this form, this object, through code, and that's the name I'm going to use to refer to it in code. How are we doing, folks? Are we all, are we all together? We're getting here. If you're not, if you if you don't have this user form showing, now's the time because it's only going to get worse from here. If you're not caught up, raise your hand, Cameron. You know, you come and help. Okay. So if you look right up here. It says user, why does it say user form one? I thought I changed the name. Didn't I change the name? Yeah, I changed the name to form product. Why does it say user form one? Yeah, that's not the name, that's the caption. And so I'm gonna find the caption property and I'm gonna change the caption property, something like product information. Oh, I forgot to tell you something, pause the recording. All right, so back here then on the user form. So the whole idea then is that all of these tools that we have in the toolbox, they are called controls. To me, that's, I've said controls to refer to these since the mid-90s. And it still seems like a weird word to me to call these. They, these are objects. These are objects that we're going to put onto this form to do specific things. They have properties. They have methods. They are objects in every sense of the word. There's a special class of objects called Controls. Why are they called controls? I have no idea. It really seems like a weird word for it. But that's just a visual objects that we put on the form to control the form. They're called controls. So let's go ahead and put this first one on. This first one, the first one isn't really a tool at all. It's the one that says don't select any tool. That's just my point. The next one then is the label. This capital A is like a label. So I'm going to select that. And then over here, I'm going to click and draw, click and drag to draw the shape of that label. There it is, label one. I'm going to give this thing a name, I'm going to call it, L it's a label, I'll call it LBL, and then ID. I'm going to use this to be the ID of the product. And I've got properties that I can change about this. I'd like this to look kind of like a data field, but the whole thing about a label is that the user doesn't change it. As far as the user is concerned, this is static text. Now, as a programmer, you can change it, but the user can't change it. This is not something the user is going to type into. This is just static text on the screen for the user. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of format it to look like a field that the user's not going to be able to edit. And so, let's, make it, let's change a couple of properties. First of all, we've got here a back color. I'm going to change that back color to be a little bit darker. And there's kind of two things I can choose. I can either choose a color from the system palette, or from the system colors, which means, you know, make this the same color as something else that's, you know, set in Windows. And that way, you know, if the user changes their color scheme, that will change along with it. Or you can say, forget that. I just want to go to a particular color, and then, the, then you've got this color palette to choose from. I'm just going to choose kind of a medium dark gray. Border style, I'm going to change that border style to be one instead of zero, which is a single border around it. And then that's about what I'm looking for. So yeah, it's kind of gray, and it's got a border. Perfect. So when I open this form, depending on the on the whatever record I have active, I would like to you know, have that come up and actually say 018-5850. So this is the, the ID. And the point is, I don't want the user messing with the ID. I'm going to let them change the name and the category and all this other stuff, but not the ID. So that's what we're going to use that. All right. 
Well, that's the label. Now, the next thing here is the text box. That's this next tool right here with a little A to B with an insertion point next to it. I'm just going to do a click and drag, and I'll bring in a text box. And I'm not sure how big I need to make it. Maybe make it like this. Now this is going to be for the name of the this will be for the name of the product. So the name of the product is over here in column F. That's what I want it to be the next thing that shows up here. So I'm going to give this a name. This is a text box. I'll use a three character prefix TXT. TXT name. That's what that's going to be. Very good. All right. We can put some more stuff on here, but let's just get this part of the form working. We want to make it so that when we open this form, it will actually show the data from whatever line is the active line, whatever, whatever line has the active cell on. So hmm. we need to we need to give ourselves a way to run some code whenever this form starts up. Here's how we get to the form that's attached to this code. Remember, there really is only one place that we write code that will get saved with the workbook, and that's inside a module. Now, we do not need to insert a new module to get this because the user form has a module built into it. And the way I get to it is just by double, you can double click anywhere on this user form, and that will use those two things. One, it's going to open up the module for the user form, but it's also going to guess at which activity I want to respond to. It says, it says, look, when the user form gets clicked, then run this code. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and yeah, I'll delete it. I don't want to start. Instead, we're going to get exposed to these two, these two combo boxes, these two drop-down lists that we have just ignored. They've always been here. They're here on every module, but we've ignored them. So now, what I have over here on the left is I have a list of all of my objects on the form. Now, I have put two controls onto the form. There is an object for the form itself. It can have, it can respond to things happening. And then there's also this one called general, which is for code that I write that's not attached to any object. It's just a sub-procedure that I've written in here as a part of the user form. So let's go ahead and choose the user form itself. Now, over here, when I have one of those objects selected over here, I get a list of events. An event is something we've not talked about. So an event <coughs> is something that happens. So all of these controls and the form itself can receive events. It can know when something happens to that control. So far, whenever we've had a sub-procedure or a function that we've written that we want to execute, the users had to do something explicit to call that procedure. And click on a button that says, run this procedure. They had to go to the, to the list of macros and say, run this macro. But now, the idea here is that we'll say, all right, this form will just be up here, and we'll be waiting for something to happen. And when something happens that we've specified, when something happens to this workbook, or to this form, then the fact that that event happened we can cause code to execute. So let's do this. In fact, let me, here's what I'd like to do. Folks, I don't want you to write this code along with me. I just want you to watch this one. Kind of sit back and, and absorb this. Let's suppose that I was going to put onto this form a button. So command button is this guy right here. I'm going to put this button on, and I'm going to call it CMD OK. Caption's going to be OK. All right, so I'm going to double click this button, and it's going to say, oh, well, it's going to guess. It's going to say, well, maybe you would like to have some code that responds to the click event and the OK button. When the OK button receives the click event, this code will be executed. That makes sense. If you click on it, that's what, that's what this would happen. If I click anywhere else, it wouldn't execute this code. But when I click on that button, it's a pair, right? It's always these two things. It's object and event. I'm going to say, no, 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 I don't. Not, not when the user clicks on it, but let's do this. Let's do when the mouse moves. There's, a, there's an event called mouse move. So now we're saying this, this procedure is going to be executed when 
CMD OK object receives the mouse move event. What's the mouse move event? It's when the mouse moves even one pixel within the boundaries of, the, of that control. What does that mean do? I'm just going to say this. CMD OK. I'm going to change some properties. CMD OK dot CMD OK dot left equals, and I'm just going to make it, I'm changing the left position of this button. What's it going to be? It's going to be a random number times hmm, the, the like, I think it's called like the inside width of the form. Me dot inside width. Uh, me is just a shortcut to the name of the form. So you just type me and that re that's refers to the object, to the form object itself. Uh, let's see, I don't want that whole thing. I probably want me dot inside width minus C M D O K dot width. Alright, while I'm at it, let's change the height as well. Top is going to be inside height minus this is a really weird thing to do. It's a fun thing to do, but it's a weird thing. So what we're saying is that every time the mouse moves, I'm going to change the left and top properties of that button. So <laughs> say, get it. this mouse, first of all, are there any mouse move events happening right now? Yeah, yeah they're happening like crazy to the form, but there's no code set to respond when the form receives the mouse movement. Could we? Yeah, we could put code. That changes it. But as soon as that mouse move happens to the button, it, it triggers that code. You know, if you're doing this, you might as well. I mean, if you're really going to do this, let me stop. Let's do one more thing while we're at it. Let's just say that cmdok.width okay equals what it used to be minus 1. So now, as you move it, almost imperceptibly, that button is getting narrower and narrower. And about now, the user is going, what's that button? Oh, is that small? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's getting smaller. <laughs> and I'm going to get it. It doesn't even say OK anymore. It just says, oi. Oh. See? Eventually, what's going to happen? <laughs> okay, is it gone? It's one pixel wide. What's going to happen when it tries to make it zero pixels wide? No. Zero pixels wide is okay. It's gone. <laughs> it's still there. It's just zero pixels wide. Can that receive any mouse move event now? No, it can't. And so, we're sunk. Okay, so, the point is, we're not... You know, it's not a, maybe if we we're coming close to April Fool's Day, you know, this would be a valid thing to do. But the whole point here is to drive home this idea that what it takes on user form to execute code is two things. You have to choose the object that you want to be the target and the event. And when you say, when that event happens to this object, then we want to execute some code. Okay? It never fails that I forget and leave this code in, and then I actually go to click the button later in the class, and I just can't go to disable that for right now. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to select your user form from your object or from your control dropdown, and now give the list of events, and just look at that list of events and tell me, what do you think is the event that will be executed when this form opens up for the first time? Just look at the names and... You know, I'm not expecting you to memorize this yet, or even read the chapter. But if you look at this, what's the name of the of the event? <laughs> initialize. When the form gets initialized, when it's very first open, then this code will be executed. So when the user form receives the initialized object, or receives the initialized event, this code will be executed. All right, so here's what we want to have happen. We want to, let's, let's do this. Let's first make sure that our product sheet is the active sheet. So we're going to say sheets, S H E T S, one called product, and we want to activate. We're going to make sure that 
make sure that when you when you open up this form, let's make sure that the, the product sheet is the active. Is it product or products? It's products plural. We'll activate that sheet. Now, all we want to do is we want to show the data that's on that on the active row. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's declare a module level variable. We talked about the scope of variables yet. What do we have? So far, the, mod the variables that we've created have been variables that are declared inside of a subprocedure. Those variables are only accessible from inside that subprocedure. But if I declare a variable up here at the top of the module, it becomes available to any subprocedure in the module. Let's create one called row. So dim row as long. As long as what? There's no as the data type long. So that'd be a long integer, plus or minus two billion. It's a big range. Okay, so now we're going to activate the sheet, and let's go ahead and set that value equal to something. So row equals the active cell dot row. We're just reading whatever row is on the active cell. Hmm. Okay, we'll see a problem with this in a minute. We'll fix it after we see it. Okay, so now I'm going to use row to kind of set up our data. So I've got a couple of things I have to find so far. One of them is called LBL ID. So LBL ID dot caption. Labels have captions. It's going to equal. I'm going to change the caption property of the label control. What's it going to equal? It's going to equal whatever column has the ID in it. What column is that? Yeah, so we're just going to, we know now that this is our active sheet, so we don't have to worry about what sheet is active. So we just say cells, row number what, row number, row, column number one, or in quotes, A, dot value. Something really similar is going to happen for our text. It's called txt name. Now, it turns out that name, the text boxes, don't have a caption. They have a value, a value or text. I believe both the value and text are synonyms for each other. So let's change the value of the <coughs> of text box. Right, that's here. Just written code to change the label. Now we're putting code to from right here. Change the text box, and it's going to be the same row. Which column now? Column five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Column six. So now, when we run this form, it should make sure that that sheet is active, and it should show that information. Now, what's the problem? I'm on the first row. I don't want to be on the first row, so let's close that. Let me come back to a different row. I'll come to my, my wood duck squealer. Oh, that's row number four. And then I'll run that form again. We can see that it's put in the product ID, 104. I can't change that. The user can't change that one. And it's also put in the name here, Wood Duck Squealer. I'll change that to Wood Duck Squeaker. Squeaker. S U U K. That looks like Squeaker. And I'll press OK. Now, why does it OK do anything? I never told it to do anything. Yeah, I mean, is the OK button receiving the click event? What do you think? Yeah, you can see it, but there's no code set up to respond to that object receiving that event. And so when I close this, is it going to change wood, wood duck squeaker to wood duck squeaker? No, I haven't told it to do anything like that. There's no. So what you don't do is you don't like connect up this control to a cell by changing one, it changes the other. No. You're reading a value out of the cell, putting it here at the control, and then if you want to write it back out, you've got to do something different to write it back out. Let's go ahead and do that now. So go ahead and put an OK button on there. The button is this guy right here. It's right here. It's just called the command button. Go ahead and get yours configured the way mine is. I changed two things of this button. One, I've put a unit of name, and the name is CMDOK, 
And then I change the caption just to say okay. Do one more thing while we're at it here, and that is I'm going to change the default property of, on this from false to true. The default property, when I've set the default property to true for a command button, when the user presses enter on the keyboard while this is the active form, it will activate the click event on that button. It's the default button. So when you hit enter, that's what happens. Okay, so we set three things on this button. We've added a command button. We have the given it a name, CMD OK. We give it a caption of OK. And we change the default property to true. So now let's take a look at what it takes for us to actually save the values from, from that text box back out to the worksheet. It's really pretty simple. I'm going to double click the OK button. That takes me to my mouse move because I already had mouse move set up for that. It should have taken you to the click event. I'll just go to the click event here. And it brings up CMD OK click. When the command button CMD OK receives the click event, this code will be executed. Now, so far there's only one thing that we can say. Right? The user can't change the ID, but the user can change the name. So we've got a particular row. Um, we're going to change on that sheet. So it's the active <coughs> sheet, because we made it the active sheet. We're now just going to say cells, row number, row, column number, six dot value is equal to, oddly enough, it's just exactly the reverse of the one we used to read the value from the worksheet in the first place. So here we're going to say, listen, whatever is here in the TXT name, the value property of the, of the TXT name text box, take that value and write it into the value of that particular cell. How many of you are going, okay, I get it. Yes, not too bad. Okay, and then the rest of you are going, I hope this makes sense, you know, in the next half hour. Okay. So let's just, we're going to run this in just a second to see it work. Let's just compare. I'm going to do this one. Hit Control Z instead of Control X. X. This one right here. All right, so I'm just going to compare these two procedures that I have. I initialize for the form and my click for the button. And we want to pay close attention to these two rows, these two lines. Here, when the user form gets initialized, we're saying we want to put a value into the value property of the TXT name control. We're taking what is on the right-hand side, we're reading out to that particular location in the workbook, and we're using the assignment statement to put whatever is here over to here. That's what gives me the right value to start with. Now, the user might change it. Now, the user's changed it. We want to save that change to the worksheet, and so when the user clicks OK, we're going to take the value that is, we're going to take whatever's in the value property and write it back up to the worksheet. And then let's just go ahead and close this form. There's a couple ways to close the form. One way to close the form leaves everything still on the form defined, but just hide it so the user can't see it. The other way says, yeah, just close this form altogether. That's the way we're going to start with. So let's just say unload. Me. me is just a synonym for the name of the object, for the name of the form. Remember, our form is called FRM product. I could say unload FRM product, or I can say unload me. Me is just a synonym for the form that is containing this code. All right, so now if I run that, it's got my wood duck squealer in there. Change the wood duck squeaker. Click on OK, and we should see it change the value here. You see it? It's kind of there it is. Now change that that value. So the whole idea here is that we don't want to do just one at a time. If that was all we were doing, we just edit it right on the sheet. We want to have multiple things that we can change. And the nice thing is that we have 
lots of different controls to choose from to get the to kind of help the user get the right data. Let's look at a few more of those uh, now. Questions on what we've done so far? Go ahead. Is, is the work you hit enter, or do you have to click OK? Should work if we just click on enter. Because if we look at our, um, let me go back to the user form. So because this is a command button, and I've set the caption to, I'm sorry, I've set the default property to true, when the user hits enter, it should trigger this. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to run the form. And I'll change it from squeaker to caller. And now, no mouse involved. I'm just going to hit the enter key. And that has closed the form and it has changed that to caller. All right. We're going to have several things that we want to do. I guess we can do them all right here. It would be nice to put them in a different procedure called load data or something. And we may move it later, but let's go ahead and keep going. Now, let's look here at department. There are only four departments, hunting, outdoor, apparel, and general. So general, I think it's called general. Yeah, there's just four departments. When you've only got a few number of departments, one kind of nice way to choose that, to let folks choose that option, is with a set of combo boxes. I'm sorry, a set of option buttons. Let's take a look at this. So this thing right here is an option button. An option button. Option buttons are mutually exclusive. Let me go ahead and bring a few of these on. So I'm going to draw an option button on here. Maybe we'll just copy and paste a few times. I've got now three or four options on this. Kind of used to see them all lined up. Now, we haven't configured these at all. We're going to here in just a moment. But all I'm going to do, you can you know, kind of watch or not watch, and keep working on what you're doing, that's fine. Is that you're going to notice that if I select one, it automatically unselects the others. Well, what if I wanted to have two sets of option buttons? What if I wanted you know, this to be a set and this to be a set? Am I just out of luck? Ah, now I can use the checkbox. The checkbox now makes those as individuals. I turn each one on and off individually. In this case, I want it to be a mutually exclusive set, but I want two different sets. There's a way to handle it. So, and the option button then works hand in glove with the frame. Let's bring a frame on. And now I'm going to bring a couple of option buttons into the frame. I'm just going to drag them in. I hold down the, the control key while I'm selecting. I can select multiple ones. I'm going to drag those into the frame. Make my frame a little wider. Now, because these are inside a frame, they are a set, and this is a different set out here. And so, if I just put the option buttons directly on the form by themselves, all option buttons placed directly on the form are one set. If I want to have you know, as many sets as I want, I just have to put the other sets into a frame. If I really want to, I can make the frame have no borders, so they can you know, they can still be on there and look like they're sitting directly on the on the form, but. That's the whole idea for the frame. Because the habit, this is kind of a normal way of using option buttons in a frame, I'm going to put all four of these into the frame. And then we'll work with them that way. So you might make this a little bit bigger. Move these other two in. Get them all lined up. Okay, so this is like, what do we call it here? This is called the department. Yeah, this is called the department. So I'm just going to change the caption of the frame to say department. So I've selected the frame, come down and find the caption, I'll change that to say department. Now, do we need to name every object? Every, do we have to give an explicit name to every control we put on the form? Right now this frame is called frame one. Can we just leave it to be frame?
wrong one? Some people will say, yeah, you put it on the form, you give it a name. I'm a little more lazy than that. I'm going to say, you know, if you're going to refer to that thing through your code, you should name it. If you're not just going to sit there, whatever name it has is fine. Um, it turns out I'm going to have to re refer to each one of these option buttons through code, but I'm probably not going to refer to the frame itself, so I'm not going to worry about changing the name of the frame. If you wanted to call it FRA1 or FRA department, you could do that. That wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. I'm just not going to do that. Okay, so the standard prefix for option buttons is OPT. So let's go ahead. OPT, so PT, apparel, A P P E R A L or A R E L. A P P R E L. Right? A P P A R E L. So given that one a name, and let me go ahead and change the caption on that one as well. The caption is going to be apparel. A P P A R E L. All right. My next option button, I'm going to call this OPT Outdoor. I'll give it a caption, OPT Outdoor. Whoops, that was good. Thanks. Let's see, what do we have? Apparel Outdoor Hunting. So this will be OPT Hunting. And the caption will be hunting. And my last one will be general. OPT general. And then it's going to be named, or the caption will be named. Okay. Now, folks, this is kind of a lot of work to set this up to look this way. Particular look, option buttons. They are really not a good choice for something that's, that the list changes pretty often. You know, if this week we've got four departments, next week we might have six departments. This would be a bad choice. There are other kinds of like choosing from a multiple choice set that would be better in that situation. Um, and so when you say I'm going to make a set of option buttons, what you're really saying is this is something where the number of items we're choosing from doesn't change very often. Because to add another element in here requires a program. Right? Someone's going to come in here and change the stuff that we're writing right now. Whereas if this is something where the, the list changes pretty often, we would use a different approach. And there are approaches that are designed for the kind of the pick list that changes pretty often. But let's go ahead and get this one set up. So what I want to do now, so this is going to be a lot different, right? Doing this text box, we can just read the value off the worksheet and drop it in. Now, we've got to check to see what value is here in column C. We've got to say, man, if it's outdoor, then check the outdoor button. If it's general, check the general button. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do that on my initialize. So I'll go ahead and put a few comments in here. This is... Set the value of the ID. Set the value. Of the name. Okay, and now we're setting the value of the department. All right. So in this case, we're going to check to see what is on the third column of the active row. In fact, we'll do it with the select case, the select state. Select case, and we're going to look in column three. We have an end select in here. Then we'll come in here and we'll have our different cases. The case, and what are they going to be? One of them is outdoor. Case outdoor. So I'm only going to have one line that I execute. I'll just put it right here on the same line. Separate the statement with a colon. If it's the outdoor, if outdoor is what's there, I'm looking for equality between 
this value, whatever is there, and this string literal, that's a match, then we're going to say opt outdoor dot value equals true. The value property of an option button is a Boolean value. It's either true or false. When you click on it, it the Excel interpreter is going to set the value property to true, and then it's going to look across all of the other option buttons in that set and set the value to false. So we don't have to worry about setting it, the others to false. They'll all be false until we set one to true. In fact, as soon as we set one to true, it'll automatically make the others false. <coughs> so we're going to do this three times. We've got outdoor, we've got general, and we've got hunting. Now we also have apparel. But we're just going to say, look, if it's not one of those, it's got to be apparel. So I will say case else. And then we'll just change the appropriate option buttons that we're looking at. So now it's going to come in here. We, we're, we're launching the form. We're looking at column three. Does it say outdoor? No. Does it say general? No. Does it say hunting? Yes. Great. OPT hunting not value equals true. And then where do we go after that? We drop down to the end select and then move on. It doesn't find any of them. It'll, just, it'll have to be apparel and we'll check that. Let's go ahead and make sure that works for us. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can kind of scrunch this down. Come over here to here we are on outdoor. I'll run it on outdoor. Yep, check the outdoor box. Here's one that says apparel. I'll run it on that one. Yep, now apparel is selected. Here's hunting. At this point, I'm going to believe that general works, and I'm going to go find it. Wait, there, it's kind of close. Select that one, and it comes up with general. So we've got that thing working in terms of reading it, but of course. The user changes it and then presses OK, and we haven't done anything to tell it to write that out. We now have to do something analogous. I mean, it's a little bit ugly, but we've got to have another case statement that checks to see which one of these is, is checked and then writes out the appropriate value to the sheet. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will be when the user clicks OK. But I can see. Do it here, write the value, save the value, <clears throat> save the name, now save the department. Select case. Now, in this case, we're going to be looking. Hmm, this is really kind of interesting. How should we do this? What we want to do is we want to look at OPT apparel. We want to say, is this value true? And if it is, great, we know what to write out. If it's not, we want to look at the next one. Look at OPT hunting. Is that value true? So does this, is this going to work for us with the case? Can you not get the value of the selected option from the frame? Oh, you know, I've never tried to do that. Do you have an idea on how to do that? Let's just let me look real quick. I don't think that that frame takes on a value based on what's in it. Might um, is it is in a set of uh, options though? Only one can be selected. I put all kinds of yeah, but I can put all kinds of stuff into a frame. It's not just a holder of options. Um, let's find out. It's called for me. It's called frame one. Dot. Yeah, there's no value. I don't think I don't think we can pull it off the frame. And, and the point is that frame is kind of a general purpose thing. I could have option buttons in there, some other text boxes. I have lots of stuff inside this frame. So if someone said case true, who said that? Wow. Really good. Yeah. What we're doing is we're trying to we're, we're trying to look for the first for the first one of those option buttons that equals true. So we're going to look for a match between true <coughs> and something else. So we're going we're to look between true and OPT apparel. Dot value. If 
that is a match, then we want to say cells row number row, column number three, dot value equals a parallel. So now the act of selecting one of those option buttons when we hit save should put the right value out to the merchant. Now, at this point, you're in one of two camps. You are either saying, oh, this is kind of cool, we can do all this stuff. Or you're saying, I can't believe how much work it is to save that value from the form of the worksheet. How are you going, I can't believe how much work this is. Yeah, it's crazy. It seems crazy to me. It seems like it should be easier. It's not. That's the way you have to do it. <laughs> How many of you are going, wow, this is a lot of power. We do anything we want. Okay. How many of you are checking email? Right now? <laughs> That's me. We're going to email. All right. So let's just check and make sure that works without error. I'm on some line here that says general right here. I'll change that to apparel. Say OK. And that changes it to apparel. And so, yeah, so that's a pretty slick way. It's just a different interface to allow the user to make that change. Go ahead. Can you run that again? So let's bring up it's apparel. Should bring up apparel, yeah, because it's just reading that line. It yeah. brings up now as apparel. Testing the old professor. Let's see, very good. Okay. Checkbox is just like the option button. They have they have a value property that's true or false. They have a capture that you can set. They're just, when you, so you select it and unselect, we're not going to spend any time on it. It's just the same idea. We are going to spend time on the list box. Let's bring a list box in. Okay, the list box allows us to select from a list. Well, so we'll look at a couple of different ways that we can use it. This then is a list that's meant to change. This is a, I'm choosing from a list of four things. We don't think these four things are going to change. This is a list of things that we expect to change. Different way to do it. All right, so let's give this a name. I'm going to call this LST Promo. This LST is for the promotions. And if we look over here to our promos tab, we've got a few promotions over here. This is a heck of a promotion, by the way, full price. What kind of promotion is that? <laughs> the other ones are okay. Free shipping, free warranty, buy one, get one free. The guys in marketing are going to come up with some others. And when they do, we're going to list them right in here. And we would like them to automatically show up. So full price is just it's, it's, it's how we say there's no promotion on this. <laughs> I'm going to require a little work. Okay, so this is now called LST Promo. There's no caption for a list box. So what am I going to do if I want to put a label on this that somehow says, hey, this is the list of promotions? Yeah, just put a label object or label control right next to it. So I'll just come here and select a label control, do a click and drag. Now this one I'm not going to refer to through code, so I'm not going to worry about uh, giving it a name. I'll just change the caption to say promotions. Okay, folks, I'm spending time on the ones I'm spending time on because I know what you're going to need to do for the project. You're going to have to do something very similar to what we're about to do. This is the, this is the most complicated one that we've done so far. I think it's probably the most complicated one we're going to do. And so stick with me because this is the stuff you need for the, for the project. Okay. So 
if I just run this, I've got, you know, here's a bunch of promotions here, a place for promotions, but there's no way for me to select it. I want to see the list right here. And the way I put the list in here is by calling a method of this control. So far, we've played with properties. Now we're going to use a method of this control. There's a method called add item. Now, tell me which event do we want to put the code on? When do we want to list the different options in that, list, that set of promotions? <coughs> yeah, probably when we initialize this form. So let's go to the initialize. Find initialize, and here we're going to... So, so, so first, we're making a set of possible choices. That is separate from marking the one that's currently marked on the worksheet. So far, when we look at this one, all we're doing is we're saying, we're assuming the list is already out there, and we're just marking which one's selected. For this list box, we've got to do two things. First, we've got to populate the list, and then we've got to mark which one's selected. So we're starting off just by populating the list of promotions. I'll type that whole sentence back. Okay, here's how we do it. We're going to set up a loop that allows us to look on our products page, I'm sorry, our, our promos page, and let's say, let's just assume that A1 is going to be full price. We're not going to actually put that in the list box. Full price is going to be the absolute. How do we get to the absolute? Is there anything else? Yeah, we better put full price in there. That's a little bit ugly. So we're going to start in A1 and we're going to go all the way down until we reach into a so we bump it to a blank cell. So to do this, we'll probably need a variable to keep track of this. I'll just declare a local variable here called x. Give x as an integer. Or we're going to do as a long. Referring to rows, it's kind of like you have the right type, but it could be, even though we only have to go one to four. Uh, okay, so let's start x off at one, and then do until sheets promos. Cells, row number x, column number one, dot value is a zero eight string. Next, we better make sure that we're incrementing x inside the loop. x equals x plus one. If I forgot to put the x equals x plus one, what have I created? An endless loop, an infinite loop. It's not gonna, it's gonna look right here. X is one, is it blank at one? Nope. Not blank, so we stay in, not blank at one, not blank at one, not blank at one. Is it smart to figure out, you know, it's never going to be blank at one? No. Just keep writing. So, remember, anytime we make a loop, just before the end of the loop structure, it's a great idea to put in what keyword? Do a next. That will let you break into it. That will let you break into it if you need to. Yeah. How do you break into it? Control break on the keyboard, or control pause. Uh, your your keyboard may not have that key, in which case you can click on the pause button right here to break into it. Or you can apparently you can hold the escape key, which is good. Which reminds me, now would be a good time to save. I haven't saved for a while, so do file save. Uh, do file save as browse download. Call this. Products underscore ball underscore. Okay, so now I've got now I have this I've got this loop running <coughs> for each one of my promotions. I just have to add those into the list box. The name of the list box is LST promo dot and then add item is what I want to do. Which one am I going to add? I'm going to add whatever is the one I'm currently looking at. And so, this looks a little bit weird because a lot of students are expecting there to be an equal sign in here, right? We come up here and we say opt hunting dot value equals true. Add item is not a property. I'm not setting the value of this property. I am calling this method and I am passing an argument to the method to operate on. Saying add an item, and I'm saying here's the item that I want you to add, and then it will add another entry into the list box, and it will set the label up as that. 
So now, when I run this, <coughs> I should, well, what, what have I done wrong here? This is a quiz. I did this on purpose. Actually, I do this almost every time I write do loop. What's the right word to end this? Loop. Yeah, so next is for a for next loop. This isn't a for next, this is a do loop. So L3. I apply that. All right. So I hit play. And now we have listed in the four choices that we had here. If you, if you're, you know, it takes a lot of practice to be able to draw that list box so that it fits exactly four. We shouldn't expect you, you to be there just yet. If you're only showing three, you've got a scroll bar. If you're showing more than four, you've got you know, some extra space here at the bottom. Uh, that's okay. So now we can just select one of these. And it will remember which one's selected. So, let's start off, that's our next step, is actually to read the selected item off of the page. So, we can do that right here inside this loop. Yeah, let's do it right here inside the loop. So, we just, we just added the item in, where's our loop here? We just added the item in, and as soon as I do that, I want to check to see if that value that we just added in is equal to the value that's sitting right here in column. That's eight, that's eight. Column eight. So we'll add that in, and then I will say if. All right, so if that value we just added is equal to number eight column on our regular sheet, on our products sheet. Now, which one is our active sheet at this point? Products is the active, oops, products is the active sheet. And so here, I don't, if I just, if I don't tell it what sheet, it's gonna be the product sheet. If I want to be a different sheet, I've got to prefix it properly, so we're okay here. So if the one we're currently looking at with X is equal to the one that is on our current row, then we want to do something. What do we want to do? We want to set the value of the combo box equal to the value that we just, or the value of the list box equal to the value that we just entered. So, Sheet uh, no, LST promo dot value equals, and then either one of those will do the trick because they're equal to each other. If I set when my list box is set up only to, 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 to accept a single selected item, all I have to do is set the value equal to the one I want, and that will show it as selected. So now this should come in, oh, let's see. Let's go ahead and write this value out when we save it. Well, let's go ahead and run this and see if we can. It actually shows that full price, they're all set for full price right now. So this will show that full price is now actually selected. We can change it when we hit okay, it's not gonna save it because we haven't written the code to save it out yet. We'll do that next. So now before we unload, over here in the OK, CMD OK procedure, or the CMD OK click procedure. We're now going to save the promo. And so in this, in the simple case where you can only select one, then we're just going to say this. Column eight of our active worksheet is equal to LST promo dot value. So we can read or write the value in that way. So now I should be able to run this. And again, this is just exactly flipping how we did it initially. Should be able to change that to free shipping and say okay. Open that again and it should come up selected as free shipping. So it's remembered that that's the one. 
but there's nothing I can do to select two of these. What if I want to do free shipping and free warranty? No can do. We get one. We should be able to see that it's changed here to free warranty. Okay. How are we doing, folks? Okay. Yep. For some reason, it doesn't write the values of the. So you've got you have this line in here on the. Yeah, on the ocean click. Camera, can you take a look through here? Don't worry about it too much because we're about to change that. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, I know this is a little uh, simple, but on the do loop, can you put the x is equal to x plus 1 outside the number? Uh, no, I didn't. Did mean to? Oh, never mind, sorry. So we initialize it outside the loop, we increment it inside the loop. Okay, yeah, you're right. It would have been weird if I had that outside the loop. It's got to be inside. Okay, folks, stick with me on this. What if we wanted to be able to select multiple promotions? <laughs> This in four minutes. Let's get started. We're going to get started. Okay. Here's the first thing. By default, list boxes are pick one, but I can change them. So I'm going to select my list box here on my form. By the way, these little buttons right up here will let you go back and forth between the code view on the form and the form. Or if you're looking at the code, you can double click the user form, it'll take you back. Okay, I've got my list box selected. Now, I'm going to find the thing called multi select. And there are three options multi select single is what we've got right now. That's the default. It just picks one. You click on it, you click on a different one, it chooses it. Multi select multi is now each one is a toggle. You click on it to turn it on, you click on it to turn it off. Let's just the other. I just got to select the form and play. Oh, now we've got to change the way we're setting the value on this. We can't just set the value anymore, so we won't be able to see that. Or there's multi select extended. So multi select so so when it's on, on multi select multi each one is individually turned on or off. Well, what if what if you had a hundred of them and you wanted to select them all? That would be a real pain. Click on, click, 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 get good all. Multi select advanced or extended allows you to like, click the first one and then go to the very bottom, hold shift and click the next one and it selects them all. Where you want to do individual ones, hold the control key, and then you can still do the individual. So, for this, it doesn't matter if you have what we're showing now. It doesn't matter if you do multi-select, multi or multi-select extended. Either one will do the trick. So now let's go ahead and play the form, and we should see that we can now select multiple items. I'm just holding the control key down, and I can turn them on and off individually. But now, when we try to save these values. We we'll press OK. And our code is just saying we want to write the value out. We're saying, hey, just take the value off this list box and put it right here into our current row on column 8. Well, the trouble is, now that it's multi-select, value isn't meaningful. We have to have a different way to be able to tell which ones are selected. And so let's begin by, by uh, saving out multiple values out here. So this is going to take a little more work. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right here, uh, right here where we're writing that value out. And I'm going to run the code with two items selected up to that point. So we get to here, I'm going to select these two, full price and free shipping, I'll say OK. All right, so now what I'd like to do is be able to take a look and see how can I tell which ones are selected. Well, when I have multiple items selected, it's pretty easy uh, to tell which ones are selected, but it's somewhat unexpected. So it's going to be a property of the list box itself. So let's just take a look and see what it is. It's called LST promo dot. Now first, let's look at, there's actually a collection. There's a thing called an array. It's the set that has all those values in it. So let's look at that one first. LST promo has a property called list. It's an array. We'll talk more about arrays 
uh, next week in class. So right now, let's just look at list, at the number two item in the list. That'll tell us it's free warranty. Wait a minute, free warranty looks like the number three item. That's because arrays begin counting at zero. And so the zero, the number zero item is full price. The number one item is free shipping. And the number two item is free warranty. Okay, and so we can see that there's this array, there's this, this collection of values called list. That's the property, it's a complex property of the list box. Well, there's also another one, there's another property called selected, and it tells us whether each one is selected or not. So LST promo dot selected, and then we ask it for which one we're interested in. So here I'm going to show both the, 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 the entry from the list property in the number zero position, as well as the entry from the selected property in the number zero position. And so this should tell me that uh, it's telling me full price and the true here then means it's selected. And so this tells me full price, this tells me true. If I change that to one, it should bump up to the next one in the list, free shipping. But because that one's not selected, I'm sorry, let's go to one. But because that one's not selected, that should return false for the second argument. So here it is, that's bringing back false. And again, if we go to the next one, the number two item, it should show us the value, free warranty, and it should show us that that one is uh, selected as well, which it does. Okay, so now that we've got these two properties, we can use this to, when we're saving this, to scan across this, these two arrays, these two collections of values, check to see which ones are selected, and then write those values out to the worksheet. So for that, we're going to need a loop. So let me go ahead and declare a variable up here. I'll just de declare x as an integer. And then down here, let's go ahead and do a loop for x equals 0, 0, 2. And I just want to know how many items there are in that list box. Well, lst promo dot list count. Now that list count, that tells me the number of items in the list. So there's four in this list, so that would be four. What we have to realize is that their indexes, referring to that array, is from zero to three. And so I want to go to list count minus one. This is going to make this loop execute four times. The first time through the loop, x will be zero. Next time through the loop, it will be one. Then it will be two. Then it will be three. And then it will get out. And so now all I want to do is I want to say, well, if that item is selected, then it's one I have to write out to the list. So I will say if lstpromo.selected sub x equals true, and where it's, a, it's, a, it's an array that has a series of values, and they're either true or false. So if when I'm looking at the number 0, 1, the number is the, the zeroth item, if it's selected, then it's selected property for number zero will be true. So if it's selected, I want to do something. Otherwise, I don't. Now, what do I want to do? Well, I want to take the value that's in the list. And I want to put that in the, into that into the into that particular cell. Okay, so right into that cell. Okay, so this is going to look through all the values that are in the list, check to see if they are selected, and if they're selected, we're going to take that value and put it into the cell. Now, at this point, it's just it's just replacing the contents that are in the cell. So let's do this. Let's start by saying, let's go ahead and get rid of all the values that are there. So before I come into this loop, let's say I want to set that equal to a zero length string. And then inside this loop, let's set it equal to what it used to be concatenated with the value that comes from there. Now let's go ahead and run that. So this should, oops, for next. If, then, and if. Thank you. Okay, 
So this now should erase any value that's there. Let's go ahead and just stop this now. I'll select two of these items. All right, so right now there's no value there. Put a breakpoint here, and then we'll run it. Okay, so we're getting to that breakpoint. There's nothing there, so you won't see it do anything, but it's going to erase anything that's there. The step with uh, F8. Now we're going to come in here. We're checking to see if the number is zero. So it's checked if the selected item at this number zero position is true. It is because our zeroth one is selected. Now we're going to try to write that value in there. So let's see it go in. Now we're checking, x is now 1, so we're checking to see if the number 1 is selected. Number 1 is not selected, so this whole expression should be false. We skip by it. Now it's on the number 2 position, checking to see if it is selected. It is selected. And so we'll write that out there. So now it's put out full price and then free warranty. Put them both right there into that cell. Well, it might be good if we did something to separate them. Well, we could separate them with anything we want. We could put a comma. Um, an underscore pipes and well, I think I like a comma. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set it equal to what it used to be and a comma and then our list on the list. So let's go ahead and bring that up here and we'll just try to run that again. I really want to let me know. There we go. So this first line should delete that. Now let's go ahead and put in the first one. Putting in the next one. And that looks pretty good. Except we've got this kind of comma at the beginning. It wouldn't hurt us to have that comma in the beginning, but it is a little bit ugly. So when we're done going through that list, let's just get rid of it. That's pretty easy to do. So we're going to say the value is going to equal what it used to be, but we're going to look for something in the middle of that particular cell, beginning at the second character. Remember, the mid takes something out of the middle of a string. It tell, I tell it where to start, and I tell it how many characters to take. But if I don't specify how many characters to take, it just goes to the end of the string. And so now that should start. This should return everything after the first character, and then we'll write that right over the top. So now that gives us a comma separated list of the values that are in that. And that should work no matter what we have selected. Let's go ahead and take these breakpoints off. And let's just run the rest of the way out. Take that breakpoint off. Okay, so this block now is the block that is saving our selected values. Here's the old one that used that we used to use to save it, where it was only had a single value. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this one out and say this is for a single value. This is when the list box can only have one value selected. All right, let's go ahead and give that a shot. So we'll select the first one, the third one. We'll say OK. That puts full price and free warranty in there. And run that again. We'll check the second and the fourth. Free shipping, buy one, get one free. So that looks like it's working pretty well. Always a good idea to make sure what we've, uh, how this works when we have just one selected. So we'll take a look at that. Run this, make sure it works when just one is selected. It's putting free shipping in right there. And it's always good to check to see what happens if none are selected. So here and then are selected, and it gets rid of it. Now we'd like to actually put that in and say full price when none are selected. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add that one in. So let's do this. Once we get to right here, if that's completely blank, then we want it to say full price. So we'll put an if statement here. We just need to stop this. If that is equal to a zero length string, then let's say equal to full price. So 
So now free shipping says free shipping. Nothing is selected. It goes back to full price. All right. So I think in terms of saving it, we're OK. So now let's go ahead and figure out how we can read when two of these values are selected and have it start up with those things chosen. So to do that, we're going to have to come to the initialize for the form. So here's the initialize. Let's see. And so down here is where we were doing this for just one when it's set up for multi-select. So let me go ahead and kind of block this whole block out. Okay, we're here in the initialize sub-procedure. You can see that right up here. User form initialize. All right, so this block is for, for when we're just on can only select one at a time. So we've got to take a different approach here. Okay. So at this point, remember here we are, we're looping through all the values on our promos sheet. And so uh, in that first column. And so here we've just added that value into the list of possible values in the list box. So now what we want to do is we want to check to see if that value is one of the values that's inside uh, the value over here. So over here in column H, instead of checking to see if they're equal, if what's on the promo, if what's on the promo sheet is equal to what's in column eight, we want to know if the text that's in the promo, the current promo sheet, is contained in here. So it'll be a different if statement. So let's do it right here. So let's say if, then we'll use a function called in string, I-N-S-T-R. It says we've got to know some string. We're going to look for the position of one string inside of another. We start by telling it where to start looking. Start looking in the first character. Start looking at what we've got in column H of our main sheet. And start looking for uh, the value that we just added into our value that we just added into our list box. So if that is greater than zero, that means it found the one string inside the other one. And if here. It might be worth a minute just to take a look at how this entry function works. Let's just take a little detour down here. So start looking at the first character, start looking at a string Say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K. And then we want to know where the E is in this. This will just tell us where the E is in that, in the fifth character. Does that make sense? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. E is the fifth character in that list. Where is the Z in this list? Well, the Z isn't in that list, and so it returns zero. So this whole expression will return a number larger than zero if this whatever value was put here, is found inside of this. And so here on our, on our main sheet, looking at this cell right here, so when we've just added the word full price into our list box, we're checking to see if full price is contained inside our list of promotions. And that would, that would be there, so this would be greater than zero. So now we're ready to mark that as selected. And so we just need to say LST promo dot selected. And then we have to tell it what position to look at. We're going to come back here and figure out how to tell it which one to look at. But we're going to set the selected property at a particular index equal to true. Now, we, the one that we found, we just barely added it in. We, we just added it into the list box. It is the last one. And so, remember, those numbers start counting at zero, and so we can tell it, hey, it's just, it's just one less than the number of items that are in the list. It's the most recently added one, LST promo dot list count minus one. So if there are three items in there, list count will tell me three. The highest index number in my selected property will be two. And so that's the one that we want to select. And so that should do it. So this, this line, let's go ahead and put a comment here. This line adds the next promotion to the list. And then 
and this checks to see if that checks to see if that promotion is is selected on the worksheet is on the worksheet. And then that's what this block does. So now when we read this data, we're looking at this, we're writing the data into the form for this cell. We should look here and see, ah, full price is there, free warranty is there, and so those should get selected. That's right. We find out. Yep, full price and free warranty are selected now. We should be able to save that out. Now it's free shipping, buy one, get one, run that again, and those come back up as the selected ones. So it's quite a bit more involved um, because in deciding which one is selected, instead of checking to see if it's equal, if the value that we just added to the list box is equal to whatever is over here in column H, we have to check to see if it's contained in. And that is what the in-string function does. Checks to see if the promo that we just added is contained in the cell that has the list of promos for that product. Whew. All right, well, that's what it takes. So let's go ahead and uh, try it on a couple more just to make sure that things work well. So we'll be changed to the next one down. Play that, we'll change this one to full price and free warranty. We've got full price and free warranty. We play the form again, and it comes up full price and free warranty. All right. Well, that's what it takes to be able to select multiple items inside that list box.